On this episode of Narcissist Apocalypse, we talk with a survivor named Harmony. And Harmony was in a 20-year toxic marriage with a police officer. It's a story of victim playing, jealousy, isolation, and caretaking. Welcome to Narcissist Apocalypse, everyone. This is a podcast that gives a voice to survivors of toxic relationships. I am Brandon Chadwick, but my friends call me Chad. And thanks for tuning in to this episode. So what is a narcissist, you may ask? Well, for the purposes of this podcast, we refer to a narcissist as anyone who has displayed a pattern of behavior that shows a limited capacity to appreciate others' perspective. It is that simple. And now, before we get to our episode with Harmony, I just want to first thank everyone in the Narcissist Apocalypse community for listening to the show and sharing your thoughts by email, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, a reminder, if you have not left us a review on whatever podcast service you use, Spotify, Apple, Google, Stitcher, CastBox, etc., etc., please leave us a five-star written review as it helps out the show a lot when it comes to ranking. Now, if you have not been to our website recently at NarcissistApocalypse.com, please do go there if you want to be part of our show. Top of the page, there's a, a button that says Guest Form. Click on that button, fill out the guest form, and away we'll go. Another way to be on the show at NarcissistApocalypse.com, side of the page, there's a floating button that says Send Voicemail. Click that button. It records up to five minutes. If you need to click it twice, click it twice, three times, three times. We are collecting letters to my narcissist for our letters to my narcissist compilation episode. And if you do not want to read your letter, if you do not want to read your letter yourself, send us an email at NarcissistApocalypse at gmail.com and myself or my old pal Melissa will read it for you. Other things going on on our site, we have high-conflict parenting courses. Yes, we are offering high-conflict parenting courses at NarcissistApocalypse.com slash courses. We have partnered with Online Parenting, and many of the courses we are offering were created by Bill Eddy. And if you've listened to our episode last year with a divorce lawyer named Helen, you'll know that Bill Eddy is an expert in dealing with these individuals in court, and now he's helped create many parenting courses to help you through divorce and to help support your children too. These courses are the most widely recognized courses by family courts across the country, if you want to support the show and are looking for guidance, please do go to NarcissistApocalypse.com slash courses. And what else do we have here? Our Patreon. Last week on our Patreon, on Saturday, we had our first support group meeting. I think it went pretty well. I think uh, everyone who joined had a good time. And we shared stories that that episode uh, or that support group uh, viewing, you can, if you join our, our, our Patreon, you can still view that actual uh, night that we had. You can learn a lot from it. And, you know, also on our Patreon, we have uh, episodes that never made it to air, follow up episodes with former guests and some fun stuff with me and my old pal, Melissa. So if you want to join our Patreon, we are having new stuff up there every single week. And if you want to support the show, become a patron of our Patreon at patreon.com slash Narcissist Apocalypse. And let's see. I think that is it, everyone. Uh, this episode uh, is very, just, it's a really informative episode. It's uh, really well done. Uh, stay to the end. I mean, you know, Harmony is as cool as a cucumber throughout the whole thing. But at the end, you know, uh, it gets a little bit emotional. So uh, anyway. I'm just going to uh, get out of my way and your way, everyone. Enjoy this episode. Thank you once again to Harmony. And here is my interview conversation with Harmony. Welcome to Narcissist Apocalypse, everyone. With me today, I have a Harmony. How are you? I'm well, thank you, Brandon. How are you? I am doing well, and 
I am just going to get out of my way and your way. I want to thank you for being here with us today and sharing your story. Harmony, the floor is now yours. Thank you. Um, So I guess I'll just start out by just a little bit about my background. I, um, you know, before I was with my husband, you know, it was pretty much status quo. I, you know, I I work a really, I have a really good job. Um, I have five sisters, so life is pretty busy with that, chaotic. Um, Normal upbringing, you know, a little bit here and there. And um, about the time when I met was probably when I was in high school. We actually met in high school. So we, you know, we hung around a little bit of the same circles. We dated for maybe, you know, one minute. And um, from that point on, then he went on with his life and I went on with my life. Um, We met up again probably about the time when we were in our 20s. It was, um, he was working um, at a bar. He was bouncing and I kind of, I worked a little bit of waitressing here and there. So we would bump into each other here and there. We grew up in a really small town, so... Um, it was kind of, you know, you would, it wasn't uncommon to bump into people that you know, or, you know, him, so to speak. So it was always back and forth. Uh, just so happened that when we did end up getting together was just around the time in our twenties, it was, um, you know, I was single, he was single. We just kind of meshed. He, you know, as far as how, I guess, there was probably a lot of grooming in the beginning, I would imagine. And a lot of love bombing. Um, A lot of what he did was he was really attentive and assertive with me. He was very focused on, like, my needs and and what I like, what I I wanted out of my life. Um, You know, he kind of checked all my boxes, I guess, so to speak, where it was like, you know, he wanted to get married, have a family, you know, the two two kids and the white picket fence, everything. So... You know, it was, it was pretty clear from the beginning that, you know, he was on the same path that I was on and that we basically had the same thoughts in mind for what we wanted for our future. Um, we started dating. It was very quick. We spent pretty much all of our time together. And um, he would start to tell me stories about his family, about how his, you know, his mom was mean and, you know, he didn't like his stepdad and, you know, he felt that his... Um, Two um, siblings were, you know, favored versus how he was treated. Um, he would kind of go off and talk about a little bit of, you know, that there may have been some abuse from, you know, his, his previous, you know, from his dad from before his real father and that um, he had a lot of issues. So, you know, but then he was, he also portrayed that he was very strong and that he's overcome a lot of these issues and that the only thing he wants to do is do the right thing. So I think that's kind of where the buy-in kind of came into place, where I felt like he was in a really good place mentally mm-hmm. and that he had um, all of his, he was self-aware, I guess, as to the things that happened to him in his life, but then he overcame them because he was also then in the same respect, he would talk about how, you know, how smart he is or how, you know, how he strives to be successful, um, you know, he also did a lot of elaborate vacations and trips where he would, you know, go off and wrestle alligators or, or bull ride, you know, just things to kind of, you know, he called them adrenaline vacations. So, you know, he was, he was complex and interesting and, you know, kind of a little bit of everything. So that's what I really liked about him in the beginning. And the fact that he was also, you know, in this, just treating me well, right? Mm-hmm. Um. Shortly after, it was kind of, you could kind of see, and I didn't see it back then because I was really taken by his charm and his charisma, but early on, now that I look at it, that I'm kind of looking at it from the outside in, you know, he had a lot of jealousy issues where, um, you know, I would go out with my friends, we would meet up later, whatever. He would get upset if I was talking to a a male, he would, um, you know, if I wanted to go out with my friends instead of going out to dinner or staying home, he would, he would, you know, call me, you know, them a party girl or call me names and, you know, call all my friends were whores. So that kind of started early on as well. And at that time, um, what did you think about that? Uh, did you let that slide? Did you challenge that? Or what was your thought process on 
that did you look at it as like he cares about me or or you were just you know taken by the other stuff that you just let it go so i think i i I kind of took it that he was you know he cared about me because the way he spun it he would say um you know i want to spend time with you i want i want to be with you i don't i don't want to spend i don't want you being away from me so that was kind of, I guess, the mind trick, so to speak, that I was like, wow, you're really into me. Like, you, you just want to spend your time with me. That's great. Um, but then it, when it was, you know, I would also fight it a little bit, too, because, you know, we were young. And, you know, I, I have, you know, I have, like I said, I have a lot of sisters. I have my, my friends. So it's like we, we wanted to go out and have fun and blow off steam. And he was more than welcome to come with us. He just chose not to and then wanted to complain about it. So it was kind of. You know, I, I would fight him on that because I was like, well, what do you mean? I'm, I'm just still going to go out and do what I want to do. Like, you're not going to tell me what to do. And, you know, then he would be okay with it, but then, you know, would be kind of in his bank of, you know, stuff to use against you later. So it was more like passive aggressive. Mm-hmm. I guess if I explain that correctly, where, you know, he's like, oh, do what you want. That's fine. But just so that you know, I want to spend time with you or I, I think you go out too much, but that's just me. And, and would you, would you, know, you get like, like okay. would you feel a lot of guilt in those situations to then eventually sometimes like yeah. I, maybe I wouldn't I would I wouldn't go out as much or I would um, go home earlier you know like maybe just go for dinner and then not stay out for drinks I you know things like that or call him you know back then we didn't have texting or anything like that we would you know I think we might have had cell phones um, but you know we would probably call each other or he would call me and if I would feel guilty if I missed his call or, or couldn't hear him so um, you know it kind of it went from where I was able to do things that I wanted to do to eventually I wasn't doing anything and did he and that was over did he have a lot of friends no he would always say that he had a lot of friends and he knew a lot of people but he never really engaged with a lot of people okay so it was always, you know, he, you know, self-proclaimed like that, you know, he has tons of friends, you know, he's this, he's that. And then when it comes down to it, he never made plans with any of his friends. It was always, I think I can count on one hand, like how many times we actually did something with his friends. It was always with my friends or, um, you know, the couples that I knew, things like that. It was never anything that he brought into our circle. And later down the road, that was, it was pretty much anybody around us was because I brought them in. It wasn't anybody that he brought into our lives. Mm-hmm. So, you know, eventually it turned into where it would go, you know, first he was a little passive aggressive about it. Then it would turn into full on fight about me going out or me wanting to go even to the point of going shopping with like my mom or going out to dinner with my sisters. It was always a fight to try to, to make plans with, with, other people besides him. And eventually it got to the point where I just stopped making plans altogether because it was just not worth the fight for me. So that was kind of, I think, one of the big things. And I, you know, I, I, I thought it was a little bit of a jerk move for him to be like that, but I didn't think about the whole, like, control and narcissistic behavior, you know, because I didn't really know what that was. I didn't know about that condition back then or that that's a, a you know, a sign of, of more things to come, so to speak. So it was very benign, I guess, at the time. You just think like, oh, you know, this guy's kind of, you know, he's a little jealous or he's a little this, a little that, and never controlling or abusive. So, you know, I just, I, I agreed, and I, I thought I felt bad for him because I was like, hey, you know, he, it's making him sad by me, like, not spending time with him and spending time with other people, so I'm going to spend more time with him and less time with other people. So that was, I think, one of the big red flags that I did even pick up on from the beginning. Um, the other, I think, was just, you know, the way that he would talk and, and act when we went places and did things. Like, it was always, you know, he always had to have the best stories. He always had to have, like, you know, he did, he did everything. He knows everything. So... You know, it used to be kind of endearing and kind of cute that, like, oh, wow, you know, this guy's so cool. Like, he has all of these, you know, feathers in his cap. Like, he's so smart. He's so intelligent. He's so brave. And now that I look at it, I'm like, gosh, that's crazy. (laughs) doesn't make sense to me anymore. But, um, you know, so that type of stuff was happening, too. And and that was, I think, maybe his self-validation 
for making himself feel valued and, and better when we go out and we do things, you know, or just kind of like wanting people to admire you. I, I don't really, you know, I, I try not to get in his head too much because it's just, it's very complicated, but mm-hmm. that was kind of another, I guess, red flag. And then also, you know, the way that he um, portrays people in his life. Like he would constantly complain about his mom and how mean she is to him or how much she doesn't care about him. And, you know, his stepdad doesn't care about him and everybody treats him badly. And he's, you know, the, the you know, the one that always has the, the short end of the stick with everything. And as I got to know the family and learn about all of this, like he's, his mom is, she's more of an enabler and like, she's basically his biggest fan. So I don't, I don't, the whole perception about how he sees things, I think is a little warped. So I never thought about that before. I always thought it was just him trying to rationalize like behavior or maybe he truly believes it or maybe she was that way with him when he was younger. I don't know. I wasn't there. I only know how things are now. So I would get a lot of flack for that. Um, and also, you know, he would, he would complain about me to people too. Like sometimes he would do it in front of me and other times he would do it behind my back, but it was always something along the lines of, you know, I don't like this or, um, you know, I, I don't, I'm not, you know, I don't want to go on vacation or I don't, you know, I choose to go out with my friends versus hanging out with him. So it was always very, um, you know, like I was, the, I was the bad guy and he was always the victim. He always portrays the victim and probably still doing that to this day. Um, as far as, you know, the controlling behaviors, um, you know, his trying to rationalize, you know, his, his way of behavior. He was also very, um, aggressive and kind of like, um, you know, he, he was abusive like physically, but I think that kind of grew later. So being aggressive, what I mean by that is that like we, you know, you always felt protective of him. Like if somebody were to come up and maybe talk to me or say something that he didn't like, he's he's the first person on the front line to be like, you need to go off or whatever it is. Um, I remember one time, like I bumped into one of my ex-boyfriends, we were at a party and next thing you know, um, my husband had him up in the corner. (laughs) I don't, I don't know what was going on, but you know, so he definitely isn't scared to fight. Um, You know, and I just talk that up as, like, he's just, you know, he just, you know, that's just how he is. He's a guy. Like, that's just what he does. Um, You know, when he started to get aggressive with me, in the beginning, it was probably more like just, like, um, holding my arm or, like, maybe, you know, walking by me and, like, you know, shoulder check, things like that. It was never anything that I thought was abuse. I just didn't really think about it. It was just kind of like, oh, then he would apologize and say, you know, I'm not going to do that again. I'm sorry. I was angry. I was mad. I didn't think. I didn't know what I was doing. I heard that a lot, too. So, you know, that's kind of how that started. And I never really thought much of it. I just, you know, I I wanted to help him. I, you know, I wanted to, you know, I, I, I felt like he was helping me be a better person. Like, maybe I did go out too much. Maybe I... You know, I, I, I should be home more. I mean, it, it really makes you think, like, what am, what am I doing? Am I doing these things? Are they wrong? Like, I don't, you know, now I look back at it. I was just a normal person. I wasn't doing anything wrong. But, you know, he really, you know, in a, in a sense, like, you miss out on, on, you know, things even with your family, like going out and, you know, a fun place with your family out to dinner or something like that. And, um, but back then... I did it for him. And I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe I should stay home more. Maybe I should learn how to cook. Maybe I should do all these things because that's going to help, help him become happier, which in turn will make me happier. Right. So that was kind of a lot of the beginning. And, you know, I, I just thought that I had to do things because, you know, I want, I want this relationship to work. I want him to be happy. And in the same time, I wanted to help him with his demons. You know, he had all these issues about, like, mistreat, you know, mistreatment from his family. Um, you know, he would always, you know, he would work a job and something would happen. There would be falling out. Either he would get fired or he would quit. And um, then it would be, oh, um, 
you know, well, they treated me unfairly. They did this, they did that. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, let's, 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 let's see what happened. Let's figure this out. And I would always take his side because, you know, he was, he was my husband or my boyfriend at the time. Like, why am I not going to take his side? So, you know, needless to say, things would get progressively worse with that type of stuff. Like, you know, I, I wouldn't go out as much. I would spend more time home with him. Um, but that still wasn't good enough. There was always fighting. Um, you know, we would get to the point where sometimes we would just sit and not even talk because he was just mad at me for something. I don't even know what. Um, maybe he didn't like that. You know, I used to like paint my nails, you know, like once a week or whatever. And I would sit on the couch and he's like, why do you need to do that? Because I like to do it. Well, why? You know, that, you know. So, you know, got to the point where I like felt like I couldn't even do that in my house. So, um, sounds pretty awful. <laughs> this sounds like I don't even know why I married him. Oh, uh, no. Um, like, I, I, I mean, at this point, <laughs> you know, you're in this relationship. You're doing what you think is the belief system of what a relationship is supposed to be. Uh, in your mind, you know, you want to help this person, you, uh, love this person and you can see, uh, do you feel like you want them to change or do you feel like you want, um, that you think you can, uh, he's making you better and you want to make him better. And like, that's where you're at. Like you think their change can happen. Yeah, I think a little bit of both. I think there's certain things that I would want to change with him. Like, maybe the whole making him trust me more. I always thought that I had to always defend myself to make him trust me more. You know, kind of like, you know, see, I didn't go out Friday night with the girls. I'm home with you. You know, I I went out to dinner with, you know, my sister. I'm, I, I came right home. I only had one drink. So I think I wanted to change his perspective of me. And that essentially would make the relationship happier. And then I also thought that, you know, we were together for a really long time. So, you know, we started out in our 20s. We ended in our 40s. So it's kind of like when you're in your 20s and you get to that point in your life, like, you don't want to do those things as much anymore. Like, I didn't want to go to happy hour when I'm, like, you know, getting older. You get tired. You get hungover. So I was kind of, like, glad that he was, oh, why, you know, kind of making me more self-aware of that in a sense. I mean, now I know it, it was probably wrong, but back then I was like, yeah, you know what? Maybe we should stay home for dinner. Like, yeah, let's, that's what's expected of us. We're, we're, we're getting to be an old married couple. That's what, what, that's what we do. We don't go as far as anymore. We don't have to. Like, he would always say, why do you need to go as far as? You know, like, you don't. And I'm like, well, I don't go out looking for people. We go out because we want wine. We're hanging out with our friends, talking, we're laughing. And his interpretation was, well, you're going as far as to meet people. That's why people go. You know, and, and. You know, I'm sure that's the case sometimes, but, you know, I'm sure I'm guilty of it too, but when I'm with him and in a relationship, that's not why I go to bars. So that kind of, I think, he put that in my head, like, well, you're only going out because you want to find someone. Like, well, no, and then maybe I don't go out, right? I don't have to find anybody. So I think that kind of, in a sense, like, I wanted him and I to kind of grow together to be better, but then also, I also thought that it was all about what what we need to communicate to each other and how we can compromise to make each other happy. And I, a, apparently, I think I might have been doing more of the compromising um, where he just kind of was entitled and just wanted all these things and wanted all these things and wasn't compromising. You know, because if he ever wanted to go out, which didn't happen often, but I never questioned it. You know, I was always like, yeah, do it, like, you know. You know, or I would even say to a lot of friends, go out, you know, do this, do that. That's totally fine with me. And, um, you know, it just, whatever, like maybe because I thought, well, I wasn't jealous. He was. And meanwhile, it was like the whole polar opposite of why he was going out versus why I went out. So, um, you know, we ended up, we got married. Um, we... Uh, uh, the good thing is we kind of waited, I don't know how good it is, but we waited to have kids until later on in our marriage. We waited probably about seven, eight, seven or eight years. Um, we moved to a different state. Um, his thing was that he always wanted to get like a police job and he was really adamant about it. So we ended up moving to a different state because he ended up getting a police job. And um, we moved and it, I was kind of relieved to actually move because I felt like, okay, now... Um, 
when I go out with him and we go out to dinner or say we want to go out at the store, we want to do something, I don't have to feel anxious that I'm going to bump into somebody I know that maybe he doesn't know, especially if it's a male, and have him kind of um, interrogate me about it. You know, because we would, you know, when they used to have the video stores, like we would go in, like I remember one instance, we went into like Blockbuster video and, and I walked in and I bumped into somebody that I knew it was just a friend of a friend or whatever and was talking to him for like, you know, five minutes or whatever. And, you know, we got in a fight over it because he's like, who was that? Why were you talking to him? Do you used to sleep with him? Blah, blah, blah. You know, all this stuff. And I'm like, no, like, so it got to the point even when I did see people I knew that like I kind of even knew because I, I guess like, you know, when you see people you know, like the, the natural thing to do is be friendly, right? You want to smile, say hi. Not, not they're talking to them for like an hour. But, you know, he would, he would, Basically, like, if I saw anyone I knew, I would either, if it was somebody's face that I knew he knew, preferably a female, one of my girlfriends, um, it was fine. But if it was, like, a male friend or a friend of a friend, I had to basically, like, hope and pray that they didn't recognize me or turn my head because I didn't want to deal with the repercussions of what he was going to throw down at me. So... You know, moving, I felt really relieved about moving because I was like, we're not going to know anybody. I'm not going to know anybody. I'm not going to feel uncomfortable walking into the grocery store or uncomfortable going into a restaurant or whatever it is. So at that point, when you're thinking that, you know, you, you know, we're, we're, we're far into your relationship at this point, And now you're, you're, that's your thought process of thinking that are you thinking to yourself, I shouldn't be having this shouldn't be a thought process of mine or is that, is it that not even in your head yet that like that is wrong? Yeah. I'm not even thinking like that. I'm thinking more along along the lines of I shouldn't have been friends with all these people to know all these people. I shouldn't have had this many boyfriends or I shouldn't have done this. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's all my fault. Yeah. And and are you, so you're feeling like uh, shame about your life. Yep. Yep, Exactly. Exactly. And so, yeah, that wasn't even a thought that what he was doing wasn't normal or, you know, I know people didn't normally do that, but I wasn't thinking that it, I was, you know, I was thinking more along the lines of, well, you know, he's just very, you know, assertive and, and he just loves me so much, you know. But somehow, so was, somehow though, um, unconsciously you're thinking, in a way, unconsciously you're thinking about, you know, uh, a survival technique in a sense of like yep. you guys moving is uh, some form of survival technique, even though you don't co- at the, probably at the time acknowledge it in that sort of way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a really good point because yeah, I mean, it was, it, you know, from that point on, I think that's all it was was survival and I'm um, just doing things, you know, so that I'm not going to upset the apple cart and that, you know, because when he's on and he's on point, when he's happy, he's fine. Like he, you know, he can be gregarious. He can be fun to hang out with. Like it's not, you know, but those times are usually when it's on his terms. It's always like if we're on vacation, that's, you know, we go on vacation. He's not going to fight with me on vacation. But, you know, of course, if it's something he wants to do, a vacation he picks, right? Because we don't go on any other types of vacations. So that type of thing, or, you know, sometimes, he, well, I would say going out to dinner, but, you know, we've had occurrences where he's been miserable going out to dinner. But, you know, if we're if he's in a good headspace for some odd reason, whatever it is, then he expects everybody around him to be in a good headspace and he will be, he'll be fine. It's when he's not in a good headspace that he wants to start trouble and he wants to, you know, fight and do all these things. So that's kind of, you know, my my job, I guess, at the time was to try to intercept that bad head, that bad headspace and, you know, constantly try to make it better for him and basically fawn all over him and make sure that he wasn't bad, that he was well taken care of, that he was happy. So I kind of fell into like a caretaker role with it where it was all about like, how can I make this better for you? What do you need help with? What, what can I do to make you not, not angry? And, you know, so it was all about like me, like, you know, okay, I didn't go out anymore. I moved, you know, five hours away, away from my family, away from everything I know to be with you because you're following your dream with your job. So, 
you know, that's kind of where I was. And, you know, then, of course, I had to work because, you know, he likes to spend money, like, ridiculous. So, you know, I, I get a job. And, you know, again, then we go with, okay, I meet people I work with. I like the people I work with. I'm, you know, I enjoy what I do for work. Um, I want to get my certifications or certain things, you know, I work in HR, so there's certain things that I want to get in place to um, build my career. And it was always, no, you know, like, why do you need to do that? You know, why do you, why do you need this? You know, I remember once I wanted to switch jobs because I found a, you know, when I first moved, I found a job right away. Then, like, you know, nine months down the road, I started looking again, and I, I found a better-paying job. I interviewed, um, you know, I, I got the job, and... And I think even during the whole process, like, I didn't even think it was, like, a question. I, I told him, I'm like, yeah, I'm going on a job interview on Thursday. He's like, why? Well, because, you know, I, I want to get this better job. You know, what, you know my situation from getting this other job and blah, blah, blah. He's like, well, you didn't discuss it with me. I'm like, well, I didn't think I had to. It's, it's for our benefit. Like, why do I have to discuss this? With you? you know, he's like, oh, well, you know, like, like he has to give me permission you know, I was kind of like, well, that, you know, then I kind of was like, oh, that's a little weird, but okay. I'm discussing it with you now. Like, this is what I want to do. And he got, you know, we got, we fought over it, but eventually, you know, I ended up moving on and getting another job. And, um, you know, he, he would just get, you know, of course, you know, then, you know, I'm trying to, you know, we don't have any kids yet. So I'm trying to build a network of friends and, and, you know, for us to, to do things like on the low key, obviously, you know, just very low key, like maybe go for a company event or, you know, find, find a, a couple couples that are married that we can have dinners with, you know, stuff like that. And, um, you know, he worked odd hours because, you know, he was working in police work. So he was working odd hours and, um, you know, it was always, I spent a lot of time by myself, which I didn't really complain about because I enjoyed it. It was just, you know, it's, he never really questioned when I spent money, like if I went to the grocery store or shopping or whatever, it was always, I was kind of okay with spending money, but, um, you know, so when he was working, I would, you know, I would go shopping or I would, um, find the local, you know, all the local stores that I like. And, you know, eventually it just, you know, he, you know, I had a network of a couple of friends and stuff that I made sure that he knew and I brought around him and, you know, so he can basically quote unquote approve of. And, um, you know, but I could never go out. It was always like I would just have somebody over the house for, like, some wine or dinner or something. It was never, like, going out unless we all went out together. Like the So that was pretty much my life for a couple of years while we were settled in, in our new state, in our new town and environment. Um, being that he, you know, worked as a, as a police officer, you would think that he would have opportunity to work a lot of overtime, to make a lot of money opportunities to meet a lot of people to kind of build that kinship with your fellow boys in blue, so to speak. Um, that never happened. He worked the bare minimum. He complained about it the whole time. He never wanted to bring anybody around me. Um, he never wanted to make plans with like anybody that he knew at work. I mean, they go through a hardcore process of academies and stuff like that. Like, how do you not bond with people? And that's kind of, you know, we're, now that I look at it, I'm like, that seems very odd. Like, if you're not going to make friends on a regular basis, at least you're going to make friends if you're in, in a academy with somebody, you know, you'll find one person. And, um, you know, he had a couple of people that he would talk about here and there, but I, I don't, I don't think I ever, I think I met one person in um, the almost 15 years we were there. And um, it was just like, he came over, or something, like we went on a boat ride or something. That was it. Everything else was, you know, he never brought anybody around me. I Now, later, I understand that he, you know, he wouldn't wear his wedding ring either. And he would tell me that's because he didn't want um, people to know much about him because where he worked was a really high crime area. And the less people knew about him, the better. So I never really questioned that. But now I know it was because he wanted to, portray that he was available, right? Um, So, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, kind of, it's kind of like you look at things later and everything kind of, all these red flags kind of kick in and you're just like, wow, that's crazy. 
So it's kind of, I'm sorry if I'm jumping around. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no. There's a lot of stuff. No, I, I, think, I, I think it's pretty linear. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, so, you know, then we had, we had my son. And, you know, I, I would have my family come down and they would stay with us um, usually because it was a really long drive for them to come visit. So my family would come and stay with us for like months at a time. Um, which I, I love because it was great. Um, you know, he was, he was fine with it, but he was also, sometimes he would get rude. Like he would be rude to my father. He would be kind of rude to my mom. He just didn't really care who he offended. Um, but you know, they all took it with a grain of salt. Just like, Hey, you know, we're, we're not going to rock the boat and you know, it's your husband, you know, it is what it is. And everybody kind of already knows that he's the, the whiner of the family. Like he's always complaining about this, he's complaining about that and knows that he is like all of these like whining issues that so we just kind of let it roll. Um, I had my son and the whole time when I came home from the hospital, he wouldn't hold him. He wouldn't really even acknowledge him. He, my son looks a lot like me. So he would go out on the, in the back and just kind of do whatever he needed to do um, and make comments, you know, just in passing, like not my kid doesn't look like me. So, you know, I, of course, I'm going through my own stuff with Pat just having a baby, my first baby, and trying to take care of him and trying to do all these things for him, and he's not lifting a finger at all to do anything. Um, they barely even acknowledging his son, like, just kind of like, you know, and, and it's weird because I didn't expect that from him back then. Now I'd be like, yeah, that's totally on point, but because I've witnessed him with, his family, like, with little, with the small cousins and the kids and stuff, and he's fine with them. Like, he plays with them. He's attentive. Like, I don't, but now I think that was all just a show. You know, I always thought he'd be a good dad because he, he likes kids and he's receptive and he's good with them. Like, he he generally shows an interest, you know, and he, that's all he would talk about when we were younger is, like, his, his nephews and nieces and how, you know, how much time he spends with them and how much he loves them and, he's, you know, blah, blah, blah. But now looking back, that was pretty much all bullshit. It was not just the show. So when he would say things like, um, you know, this, this child doesn't look like me, how would you respond? Mm -hmm. Um, and is that, was that devastating for you to hear? Um, I, I can't say it was something that I didn't, it, it didn't, the things that he would say to me on a regular basis, so that was really what didn't really hurt, I guess, so to speak. You know, so I wasn't like, I just kind of blew it off because I'm like, you're, you know, I, I think at this point I was just thinking like, you're just an idiot. Like, I, I don't even, and right after I think I had my kids was when his words aren't really affecting me because I think that I was just so concerned about what I needed to do for them and like, your priorities change a lot. You know, speaking just from my own personal experience, like, I just feel like maybe the things that he was saying were starting to sound, like, really off the wall and stupid, honestly. And for him to make comments and upon comments about things, at the, I just would get to the point where I was, I was still trying to defend myself and I was still trying to, like, understand why he would say the things he would say. But then other, other times I, would, I was just kind of like, He's crazy. Like, uh, just let him ride. I don't care. Like, he'll get over it in 10 minutes, and then he'll be fine. Okay, so, so that's so, kind of where I was with so, it. So did it take having children to realize to have, you had two children, correct? Uh, yes. Did it take having two children to realize that you had three children? Yes. <laughs> And uh, Very much so. and when you realized, like, did he start to become jealous of the time you spent with your children? Was he at that point competing in his mind with the children? Um, he, you can see it in his mannerisms and the way he acts, but he would never admit to that. So I always felt that he felt that way about it but he's never going to come clean and act out on it. Like he will act out on other things. He will act out on, you know, I'm, I'm a big whore. I, you know, he would always constantly accuse me of cheating on him all the time. 
all the time, even after I had kids, like that never changed, you know, and, you know, and make me pay for things. But when it came to the kids and what I have to do for them, he, um, he, he would act a certain way. Like he would be a little resentful, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't blatantly say it or he wouldn't do something that was so like catastrophic to make me realize, Oh, you're only doing this because I'm spending time with, with our kid right now. If that makes sense. Yep. And once you had the kids uh, and grandparents, uh, I guess his parents, which that's what I mean, the grandparents on his side, um, how did they interact with the family and uh, him and you guys once the kids came? So, you know, I mean, it, it was fine. They, they were around. I mean, you know, they would visit us more often because we had the kids. So, um, and the, you know, uh, my my family and his family are very um, good with the kids. So, in a sense, it was helpful to have them around because they, you know, kind of like how enabled. Sorry, with um, all of the stuff that he needs to do, um, they would enable it too by being sort of like helping us a lot with the kids. Like I was always the one putting putting the babies down, changing them. Um, and taking care of their day-to-day necessities, but, you know, they were always holding them, taking care of them, you know, allowing us to go out to eat and stuff. So it was helpful, and in turn, I think that made him happier. Nobody ever really acknowledged the fact that he wasn't, like, holding his son or that I was doing all the work. I'm sure they could see it, but, um, you know, no one's going to call him out on it because then it's going to start a fight. Why would you want to do that? Yeah. Okay. You know? So that's kind of where, where that, that took a turn. And it was it was nice for me having everybody around because it was super helpful. Um, and, you know, and he took advantage of it, too, because then, oh, yeah, you know, we're so busy with kids. You guys go out and eat. And then he's like, oh, like, I can't believe, like, I'm so tired. You know, if the baby cry, you know, then it was always about him and, and the break that he needs, right? Which I, I kind of find humorous now. <laughs> like, really cute. like. Okay, like good for you. I'm so glad you can get away from a crying baby that you have nothing, <laughs> nothing to do with at this mm-hmm. point. So, um, you know, that kind of ran its course. He was still complaining about his job, complaining about me. You know, obviously because I went back to work, complaining about me working. Um, he would, I think, and I can't really say for sure, but I think usually when he had somebody in the wings, like if he was either cheating on me or if he was um, thinking about it or had somebody that he was interested or talking to, he would get really mad at me during that time. And I never really thought about it. So, you know, I started learning about all of this stuff with projection and all of that. Um, I mean, he would, he would get aggressive. He would fight with me. He would he brought up all this stuff that didn't even make sense to me. Like he would say to me, Oh, just like when you used to work at the bar and you used to work there till four o'clock in the morning and you were off, you know, sleeping with the bartender, you were off doing this, you're off doing that. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like he would just make all of these outlandish accusations. Like that he believed, I, I truly believe to this day, he believes that they're real. And I don't even know who he's talking about, honestly. You know, it's the strangest thing. So he would get really upset with me. He would fight with me. You know, he would start with the physical stuff. Like, it was more like he would punch walls and break stuff. You know, obviously never his stuff. It was always like a chair, you know, break a wall that he can patch up. You know, things that I think he knew have no value because he's not going to break, like, you know, something that he really liked. Um, So... You know, that he would, then it would get to the point where it would get physical. And I think it, I can't really recall, but I think it might have happened a little bit before I had the kids. And then a lot later after we we had the kids. So, you know, and like I said, it would start out with just like the shaking. You know, he likes to, you know, grab the throat and and stuff like that. Um, You know, but then he would ask like he's out of control, like he would, you know, say, well, I was really angry. I was wrong. Um, you know, there's a whole line of excuses about why he did this. It was never his fault. He blacked out. He, you know, I've heard this a lot from 
you know, just in general, like I've heard this kind of my whole life from different sources is sometimes people, when they get really aggressive and they fight, they just kind of black out and they go into survival mode and they just kind of like take off. So I, I kind of thought that that's what it was. Like he's just, he's so upset, you know, he, it's, it's ridiculous why he's upset at this point. Like, you know, I'm, and I'm constantly trying to defend myself because I have proved him that he, that what he's saying isn't right. Um, but then it, we just fight. Then it just, you know, and, and he's the aggressor. Like, I'm not going after him. I would No way. Like, it, that would just make things way worse. So I just, you know, he, it would run its course. And then, you know, the next morning or an hour later, whatever it was, he'd be sorry, he would cry, um, you know, complain about how he doesn't want to be this way. He doesn't understand why he does it. Um, but you know, that, that would happen, I think around the time when he was probably off doing something or wanting to do something. Um, because that's just my gut, what I think. Um, so, you know, in the midst of trying to like, you know, raise kids and raise a husband (laughs) and have family over and stuff, it was kind of, uh, I think it was almost like a, like a, like trying to calm a storm for many years and you know I you know I thought I left a couple of times usually it was um right after I had one of the kids um because you know I I wanted to really put start putting my foot down being like it's not okay for you to treat me like this like I don't deserve it I don't I don't understand why you're like this and his response though was like well you know if you weren't such a whore I wouldn't have to treat you like this it's all your fault and you know, so, so I would leave, you know, I'd, I'd go stay with my family for like, you know, 12 weeks or whatever it is and, and with, the, with the kids and, and, um, you know, then he would, you know, tell me that he's taking a whole bunch of classes, he's doing a lot of reading, he's going here, he's going there, he's not drinking, whatever it was to get me back, right? Mm-hmm. And what would and your, fa- what would your family uh, think when you were uh, coming to stay for 12 weeks? Did you tell them the truth about what was going on? And if so, when you went back, what were their feelings about everything? So I wouldn't tell them the truth. I would tell them, you know, they they knew that he was a pain. They knew that he was high maintenance. They knew that he verbally talked to me the way he did. They didn't know that he was hitting me. I didn't tell anybody that for many years because I don't, I didn't want them. First, I didn't want them to worry. And second, I didn't want you know, I didn't want to hear it, and I, and I want to be able to make my choices, right? Because, you know, once you leave and, and you have to go do that, 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 that's the end. Like, you're not going back. Like, you're stupid if you go back, right? Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to hear it. So, you know, that was kind of my angle of it. And, you know, nobody really pushed me for it. It, it, it was what it was. And, um, you know, then when he, um, you know, said all the right things and, and made a concerned, quote-unquote, effort, which, you know, was not really true, I would go back. And then things would be good for like a month. They'd be good for two weeks. They'd be good for, you know, I think the longest we went was probably like four or five months. And then it would start up again. Then it would start out slowly, right? It would start with the um, drinking was a kind of a big thing for him. He would say he's not an alcoholic. He's a binge drinker. I don't know if they're, I don't know what's what, but um, you know, he would, you know, and I, you know, I, I would, I'm not much of a drinker. Like I could take it or leave it, you know, but, um, he would, uh, you know, kind of quit, quit cold turkey. And I was like, fine, I'm, I don't need to drink. That's cool. I'll do it too. And, um, then it would go, then it would start with the O'Doul, you know, drinking the, the beers or whatever. So he indulged in that. And then it would be, we'd start getting wine again. And then it would be the wine. And it would be who knows what else, because I think he hid a lot of it from me. Not that I was like, you know, I'm like, I'm not your mom. I'm not going to watch your drinking. So he would hide a lot of it. And um, then there would be another occurrence. And then it would be probably bigger than the last one. This would be a little bit more. It would take a little bit longer to to inch up to where it needed to go. Um, And sometimes I could diffuse it. Sometimes I couldn't. Then it would blow up. And you never knew when that was going to be. Was it going to be when I came home from work one day? Was it going to be on a Saturday? Was it going to be when he came home from work? I don't know. So, so in the, in the in your, when you had your kids, 
to, I guess, the end of the relationship, that uh, would have been, in my mind, let's say, uh, at least 10 years? Yeah, that time period? probably so, going on 12. Yeah, mm-hmm. so let's say it's 12 yeah. years. So, you know, I, I've, I've heard a lot of stories before where eventually the the partner who is you in the story, the survivor of the story, that um, everything eventually became kind of like a pattern. Everything started. You went through the ebbs and flows. It's like you knew what kind of wave you were riding and you knew exactly when it was going to crash. And they were like two year uh, like pockets or three year pockets where, um, you know, there was always some sort of big event and then it would all kind of restart again. And then it would, yeah. the, the same thing would happen and then it would restart again. So, um, was that, that was your experience. And can you describe kind of like maybe when you realized how you knew the ebbs and flows and what you would look for? Um, yeah. So that's definitely the way it would happen. It would, um, you know, I always knew that when I came back, I would have at least a week. You know, to two weeks sometimes of, of good treatment and, and the kids would be happy. We would all be happy. Um, provided we were, you know, kind of like, it was kind of like a honeymoon phase. So um, I always knew that I had that amount of time, maybe pushing it a month, right? So the red flags or the things that I would notice make it kind of change would be when he would start to get, like, impatient with me or with the kids. Um, he would, um, not, you know, he was, he, the, the types of behaviors, the love bombing that he was doing would just kind of completely stop. He would be more like, first he was assertive with me, like, oh, you know, taking care of me, so to speak, I guess, you know, kind of like, um, you know, maybe bringing me flowers or maybe playing with the kids or, you know, saying, oh, mom's tired right now. Let's, let's go out back. Let's, let's go on the swing. Let's do this. Let's go whatever. Um, and then that, then once the impatience would kick in, that would stop. Then he would start coming home where it was like, he would just be, I'm so tired. Or, you know, I'm just really stressed out. And then kind of like, or he would kind of fall back into not being as happy, I guess, where I would have to because he was doing it for me for two weeks, right? So now I have to be the one like, what do you need? What can I help you with? Do you, do you need me to rub your back? Do you, need, do you need me to take the kids out for an hour? Like, how can I help you? Because I'm reciprocating for the way he treated me for two weeks, right? And then it would just turn into, then all of a sudden I'm doing that all the time and he's just getting progressively worse. So I guess that's kind of where, the, and then it would just get to the point where his thing was he would like slam things on the counter or walk really heavy or, or slam doors. So then when you know that that's happening, that's when you know that like stuff's going to get real pretty quick. And then it would turn into, or he would just make noises out of the blue, like just kind of like random noises or, um, you know, kind of just do things like that. And then when I see that what I'm doing isn't helping him, then I kind of like go in into my, survival mode where I'm like, listen, I'm just going to avoid you. Like I, I mean to go, you know, I'm going to make sure that when he comes home late at night, if he's working, like that sometimes I would stay up and wait for him so we could talk and hang out and stuff. I would make sure I'm, I'm either asleep or I'm pretending to be asleep because I am not going to deal with you when you come home. And then it would just erode because then all of a sudden I'm not looking out for his best interest because I don't care. I'm ignoring him. You know, it turns on me. It's the reason why he's acting like this. So that's kind of, I think, the, the the MO that he kind of justified why he acted like that. Mm-hmm. And as, you know, time went on, I guess the events that would be the blow-up events, they would get worse, uh, I'm going mm-hmm. to assume. And, you know, at a certain point, the kids are probably, you know, towards the end, in the maybe the last two episodes, they're somewhere between 7 and, and 12 years old, I'm going to assume. So, like, yeah. they, they know at that point they're really are, are probably in tune of kind of what's going on. Uh, what's 
uh, they, their headspace or are they how affected are they uh, by uh, everything and uh, their relationship? Uh, like, are they scared? Um, and how are they behaving uh, while this is going on? So when you know they're kind of, I guess it's kind of they're a little numb to it at this point because they've witnessed it. I think to them it's kind of at the time anyway it was kind of normal because what else do they know? Um, which is really sad, and I hate that that happened. Um, but they, you know, they kind of, I guess, would, you know, obviously they would cry, they would be upset. Um, they, you know, when, when they were little, they didn't, you know, I did my best to protect them by, you know, not bringing it around them. Like if he followed me into the bedroom, I would, you know, close the door or we would go outside or I would try to, um, make it, keep it away from them because typically it wouldn't happen midday. Like when we're all out, you know, the the little fights with, you know, the little dicks, like the gaslighting and stuff would happen during the day. Um, but the real stuff would happen pretty much when they were in bed, like when they were they were tucked away. So, you know, that's one reason I think why I really, you, you know, they're not crazy. Like he's not crazy. He's he's calculating as to when he when he acts the way he does. Because you know, people who don't have control over things, they're going to do it in the middle of like the mall. They're going to do it all you know wherever. He has no control over it. He's just doing it to to prove a point and to, to just be this abusive person. So it was always like, I think, strategic on his side where it would happen when, you know, they weren't around. I mean, obviously there's a couple occasions where like, you know, sometimes I would feel safer like going into my son's room because I knew he wasn't going to come in there and, and start, start grabbing me and doing stuff to me. Right. Um, you know, so, you know, I, I, that, Kind of, it kind of, I'm not proud of it, but that would make me feel safe because I knew that was a safe room for me to be in because he wouldn't, he's not going to follow me in there and, and, you know, pull me out by my hair or anything. So, you know, he would, he would, you know, sometimes he would leave me alone. Other times he might like open the door and be like, you need to come out. We need to talk. Because it was always about we're talking, right? We need, we need to talk. Um, so sometimes I would come out. Sometimes I would just say, you need to leave. Leave me alone. Cause, you know, we started having, you know, part of our agreement when I would come back was I was like, listen, when you get like that, you need to cool off and you need to stop. And if I tell you to stop, you need to stop. And he agreed to it. And he only did that a couple of times. And then it was like, no, then he didn't care anymore. And I think, you know, at that point, when he started not caring about the kids being around and anybody being around, that's when I'm like, no, this is not going to happen anymore. And, um, you know, I, I did leave. I left again for about seven months. Uh, that was, I told, I told my family what was going on. Um, I told his family what was going on. I was getting into ready to move. I wasn't going to be in the house with him anymore. Um, he went through, you know, he, he, he did a whole 180. He did, uh, you know, he did one of those abuser programs. He, um, you know, said all the right things, but all, this was the, the time when I thought he really did change. And, you know, mind you, he's a police officer. When things happen, I'm not going to call the cop because if he gets in trouble, he's going to get fired. And then, you know, what's going to happen then? You know, who knows? And meanwhile, you know, we have a house, we have kids, we have that, we have this. How hard is it for me to leave, and, and what am I going to go do, live in a, in a small apartment with, with kids, or, you know, because, you know, I still have to pay a mortgage? Like, it, there's there's so many factors, I think, why, you know, and, and I don't think it's uncommon, because it's a lot of what I was reading about why people don't leave, and people do, they, they stay, maybe not so much in this type of a situation, but people stay in relationships because of financial reasons, and it's really sad, you know, kind of that we have to dictate our happiness and our well-being around money. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a fact. I mean, what are you going to do? You know, go file bankruptcy, go into something so that you can't, you know, you can't provide for your kids. Like, it's hard. And then we, you know, I, I did at that point. I quit my job and everything. And I had a really good job. And I was like, listen, I, I can't. And then, of course, he did the 180, changed everything up. You know, I go back, you know, 
things were good. I think this was the longest time it was good, maybe four, four months, maybe five. And then it started up again, way worse. Then it was more, we had a couple of occurrences um, there. And then um, he decided that he wanted to go, you know, we would constantly apply for different police departments too because he was never happy with his place of employment. He always wanted to go to other places. You know, they treated him badly. They sucked. They were this, they were that. So mind you, during all of this stuff that's going on, um, we're sending him to different states. We're paying him to go rent cars to go across, you know, up to wherever, go down here, go there to apply for all these jobs. Mind you, all these, every time you apply for a police job, you have to pay, um, you know, money. You know, you have to get a place to stay. Some of them have application fees, too. So, I mean, there's there's lots of money involved in that. And, um, you know, he, he would get down to the wire of some of them, and then he would just stop, or, he you know, he wouldn't be happy with it, or he would bomb an interview, whatever it was. So we finally um, got him a job in our home state. We moved back home, um, sold our house, um, bought another house, and now we're closer with family and stuff. And he, there was probably, I think, three really bad occurrences since we've been home that he left for about a month or so. And then, it, you know, we had something happen, like we had some weather issues or we had um, something with the house, you know, something that would make him come back because I needed help. Because, like, if I have a tree branch fall on the roof of my house. I certainly do not know the first thing about what I need to do to take care of it. I do now, but <laughs> I didn't know then. So he has to come and kind of save the day. And then, you know, then he's apologizing for his behavior. And he's, um, you know, basically with his tail between his legs, wants to come back. And I, I took him back because what am I going to do? I'm going to run a house by myself, you know, when I have things going on. So, you know, I would take him back. And his big thing that he would say to me is that, um, I'm never going to leave you. I, um, I don't want to break up this family. Um, it's horrible if we were to break up this family. Why would we want to do that? The kids need a father. They need a mother. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to be better, a better man for you. Um, I love you forever. I will never stop loving you. I want this to work more than anything in my life. Um, I'll do whatever it takes. That's all he would say to me. But then, you know, it got to the point where it's like, okay, you're saying these things, but you're not acting upon them. And that's where you really have to take a look back and say, well, it's just words. Like, what are you doing to do all of this? And then he's like, well, let's go to therapy. I said, okay, find a good therapist that deals with domestic violence, and I am on it. And then he would say, oh, now you don't. Then, then he would twist my words around and say, well, um, she doesn't want to go to therapy. That's not what I said. I said, I will go with you if A, B, and C. But it, the only thing he heard was she doesn't want to go with me. So that's kind of, you know, there, there's a whole bunch of everything I would say to him, he would he would twist around to his benefit and make it sound like something it totally wasn't. So, um, you know, that, that happened throughout our whole our whole marriage and our whole life with him, like that was just something that it was happening. He would do that with everybody else. It wasn't just it was with everybody. Um, so I guess towards the end, it was, um, I found out he was cheating on me. He had a full blown relationship with someone else that he worked with, didn't work in the same capacity, but worked you know, somewhere along the line. Um, and I actually, the reason why I found out was because I found, I found a cell phone that he had in his bag. And meanwhile, things are kind of progressively going downhill. He is, he's still doing, you know, at this point, he's doing the abusive behaviors with me. He's, um, you know, we're having occurrences where he's like, you know, threatening me and, you know, pushing me around, so to speak, and abusing me physically and mentally. Um, so it was, you know, I was waiting, I was just waiting for the ball to drop so I can just kick him out of the house and he'll never come back because, it, you know, he, then he would say things like, well, I'm not leaving my house. This is my house. So then I would have to be the one to leave. Right. So needless to say, um, I, you know, I found a phone, I called the number, spoke to this girl. She basically told me everything that I always thought this whole time. She said that he told her that he's been single for seven months 
that he only lives with me because of financial reasons, that he, um, you know, isn't, doesn't have any sort of relationship with me other than the children, that he, um, you know, basically the complete polar opposite of what he's telling me. So he's not only um, lying to me, he's lying to someone else. So she's thinking that, oh, this is great. I've got this weak divorced man, you know, that that I can build a relationship with. And, um, you know, I told her the truth. And, you know, I don't, I don't know what she took out of it, but, um, you know, at that point, I was able to get him out of the house for good because he wasn't going to come back after that, you know, because all, all the time he, and I was actually, it's kind of weird to say, but I was like so relieved and so happy. Like, I'm like, go ahead, you can take him. He's yours, have him. And, um, you know, I, he was working, I called him up and I'm like, listen, he, um, this is what I know. I, I know everything. Don't bother coming back to this house. If you come to this house, I will call the police. You, I will get a restraining order against you, and you are not welcome there anymore. And he obliged. He's like, you know, of course, he's crying and telling me how much he loves me and how what I'm, you know, oh, no, it's not true. Till this day, till this day, he will deny it. He told me he only slept with her once, and it was because he was drunk. He will still say that till this day, and I'm pretty sure they're living together at this point. And he will never admit it. Which I find odd because I'm like, well, you know, come on, what have you got to lose? Who cares? But um, yeah, I mean, it. That was basically the whole reason why he's out, and I'm so relieved, and I'm so glad. And it's really sad to say, but it took me basically catching him with his pants down for him to not come back in my life. And maybe it's because of all the times he constantly would accuse me of cheating on him. Um, that. You know, maybe he feels, I don't know if he feels bad about it or not. I'm sure he's justifying his behavior by what he thinks I, I've done, right? But, um, yeah, he. I filed um, in January. And, you know, he's been kind of estranged from the kids. He doesn't come around. He doesn't provide anything here. He um, He's just kind of like disappeared. He took his car that I was paying for um, that actually ended up um, something happened with it. So, you know, got totaled and stuff. Um, but he, yeah, he's just MIA and doesn't. And now that we're going through the court system, you know, he hired this crazy lawyer, forced me to hire a crazy lawyer, which none of us, neither one of us have the money for, but we're doing, you know, what are you going to do? Um, the lawyer comes up with all these lies. Um, talking about how, you know, how much of, how much he, you know, wants, you know, needs to spend time with them, but he has 101 excuses about why he can't see the kids, right? Um, and yeah, that's, that's where it is now. I'm just waiting for everything to kind of fall through and see what happens. Yeah. So, you know, for people who are listening, this episode won't be out until everything is, uh, finalized. Um, so sometime hopefully in, in September, everyone will hear, uh, this show, but you're, you're, you've been, uh, out of your relationship with him since in a way, January. Um, yeah, probably a little before that. I want to say October of last year. And, uh, have you been doing therapy and healing and like, when did you kind of dive into eventually showing up here on our show? What what happened to get here? Um, so, yeah, I, I um, during the past, like, I think I've been going through healing for probably at least the last three years of my marriage because I was, um, I was doing a lot of reading. You know, at first, it, you know, when, when I used to want to fix our relationship or when, you know, both of us, I guess, wanted to fix, I would do a lot of relationship books and try to do therapy with him, um, a lot about things that, you know, it takes two to tango and, and how we can work on our relationship. Um, but then I, I realized once I started reading that um, Lundy Bancroft book, Why Did You Do That? Mm-hmm. A lot of his behaviors and a lot of what he was doing to me was spot on. And that kind of, I guess, gave me my awakening to kind of understand that, you know, A, what he's doing is not normal. B, it, it's 
pretty common. It's a textbook. Um, and see that I, it's not, I, us fixing the relationship is not the problem. He needs to fix himself and want to not be this abusive person. And then maybe, you know, I'm sure that there's things that we can work on. There's things that everybody can work on, but if he's not willing to do the work on himself and, you know, not be abusive, then there's no chance. And I think that's what really gave me the, the awakening to say, like, to even be strong enough to walk away from it because I'm loyal. Like, I, I want it to work. I don't, I don't want my kids to have to worry about not having their dad around. But in the same respect, like, what are your healthy boundaries and, and how much of this can I actually fix? I mean, I'm sure if I could fix it all myself, I would. But, you know, and I'm not a saint and I'm not, like, perfect. But, you know, I try to, I try to do the right thing. And just, you know, it just hurts a little bit. And it's it's very sad that you have somebody who chooses to live like this and hurt people like that, people you supposedly love. And I think that's kind of what made me want to do more reading and want to learn more about it. Because if I can help just one person by listening to what I went through, you know, that's a win, you know. And that, you know, I, I think I just stumbled across your stuff because, um, you know, just from listening to different podcasts and, and um, you know, I listened to a lot of yours and I was like, you know, a lot of what, you know, your stories, they help me too because you don't feel alone, you know, and you, and you understand that what you're going through is not normal and that you can thrive and you can have a normal relationship and you, you're not crazy, you're not you know, a hot mess. You're not all these things that this person who's grooming you to think that you are, who is doing it for their own agenda, they're not doing it because they care. They're not doing it because they want to make you better. They're doing it because they're a rotten person and they have an agenda to to hurt you. And I know that's kind of harsh to say, but in the same respect, like, you know, when he's ready to do his work, I hope he can, and, and, and I hope it happens for him, but I don't really see it happening. And, um, you know, at the point that I'm at with my healing is just kind of, you know, you go through, I guess, kind of like along the lines of the stages, like you go through with grief, right? You go through your denial. You go through, I can't remember them all, I'm sorry. Then you go through your anger. You go through your acceptance. You go through your sadness or whatever it is. Um I've already gone through, I guess, like my realizing, you know, that accepting the fact that I'm not the one to change him. He needs to change him. It's been 20 plus years. He's not willing to do the work. So I just have to let it go. And then, you know, I was, you know, I think I'm still kind of a little angry for a little bit about, um, you know, now that I'm realizing all this stuff that he's done to me and that, you know, how he made me feel and, and even not even so much for myself, but for my children thinking what they have to deal with. Um, So that kind of makes me upset. But then I also feel kind of sad for him because, you know, what kind of life is that to live to be like that? Like how exhausting is it to have to think like that all the time, to have to put this act on, to have to lie all the time, you know, to keep up with it. it? It's exhausting. And it makes me sad because, it, you know, He's going to have, you know, it's hard work to fix yourself and to do these things. And, you know, like right now I, I do like weekly, you know, sessions and I have my kids in weekly sessions just to talk to somebody so that they can understand that what they've witnessed and, and even what they're going to go through in the future with him. Because I'm sure that, they're, you know, I hope that they're going to have a relationship with him. I hope it's going to be a positive one, but I don't want him to pull the same stuff on them that he does with me. and. You know, it's 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 a it's a highly um, it's highly likely that that's probably going to happen. So I'm trying to just trying to think of the tools that they need to have in their toolbox to identify and to respond to it, so that they're not going to be messed up from it. Because I I can only control when they're with me. I can't control like down the road when we do visitation and all of that, like um, the time that he's going to spend with them alone. So I think they need to be self-aware of, of their power and how they're going to react to it. And that's going to be hard. With you as their mom, I'm going to say they're going to have a really good chance. 
Like, um, I mean, you're doing all the right things. So, um, you know, in the history of, of the show, it's, it's tough. I, I hear so many stories and I, you know, I, I listen from a point of view of, um, you know, I, I, this is my job and, you know, I'm, I'm I'm sitting here. It's hard to make me cry. You made me cry. (laughs) Um, you're, 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 you're part of the end there. Um, I mean, that was, it was very powerful and, I think um, today you're going to help a lot of people. Um, you know, you, you told your story really well, and I'm uh, so happy that you came um, to tell your story. And uh, before we leave, uh, do you have one last thing you want to say to everyone? Um, I just, I just think that you know, don't underestimate how strong you be, and um, you know, just learn like just do the reading do the research and and you know one thing that i realized too is that it's okay to ask for help and whether it's from your family whether it's you know talking to someone or even like you know the local the local like domestic i you know i know a lot of it is mental but there are you know a lot of it has to do with domestic too is like don't be afraid to, to talk to people and to learn and and it you know it affects everybody it's not just you know this doesn't just happen to one class of person or it doesn't just happen to like, you know, different types of people all over the, you know, it happens to everybody and, you know, just, just be self-aware and be strong and, and don't be afraid to, to put, to put your voice out there and ask for help and, and get it. Well, Harmony, uh, once again, I really want to thank you for being on our show today and telling your story, sharing your story. It's been an honor uh, talking to you. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you, Brandon. You're welcome. And for everyone else out there who is listening, I hope you have a good night.